My name is Adam Mestian and I am an assistant professor of history at Duke University in the United States. I am a historian. I'm a historian of the modern Arab world, especially. Uh, I'm interested in Arab nationalism and Islam and institutions in the modern Middle East. Uh, here in the Institute of Advanced Studies of Paris, uh, I am privileged to work on my second book uh, entitled Modern Arab Kingship. In this book and in this project, I have a very simple question. After the First World War, a number of new Arab nation states were monarchies. Kings, sultans and emirs ruled the Middle East. And I'm interested in why. There is no shortage of explanations. Some point out uh, uh, to uh, the effects of Islam. Others think in terms of tribal or family relations. Again, again others uh, point to property relations, which maintain monarchical systems. And again, others, uh, many historians, argue that European empires appointed puppet kings in the new Arab nation states. My approach is a little bit different. I start with a general theory about how monarchies function in modernity since the 19th century. I think uh, that uh, monarchy was an important form of legitimacy um, given or bestowed by larger empires on small nation states since the early 19th century, uh, especially in Europe and Afro-Asia. It was a very specific form of, of delegated or legitimate sovereignty. Uh, it was a form of imperial rule. It was um, a tool to integrate states, uh, smaller states, into a new international system. That is, monarchy is not opposed to modernity, but it is a very special form of uh, modernity. Modern monarchies are necessary, were necessary parts of a particular historical moment in the 19th and early 20th century. And I apply this theory on the new Arab nation states, on the, on the reorganization of the political space after the fall of the Ottoman Empire under the so-called mandate system. I think that monarchy at that moment served, at least in the eyes of the British imperialists, as a kind of um, negotiated government uh, between local elites and the empire. And in some ways, very likely also the local elites themselves thought that this is the case. Um, therefore, I try to integrate, I try to tell a new story about the, the making of the modern Middle East through the question what the monarchy meant for the empires, for the mandatory powers, and also for the local elites. At the end, I think one of the important conclusions of my study that the monarchical government form caused um, an intellectual turn as well, or let's say a theological turn in how political Islam is articulated in Arabic. I think the major social importance and relevance for today of my project is first of all really to show how uh, not only republican governments but also uh, monarchies, uh, forms of um, uh, forms of, if not it's sometimes di dictatorships, sometimes not less uh, dictatorial forms, authoritarian forms of rule um, are part of uh, our modern history, uh, are natural part of our modern history. Second, that uh, monarchy is a particular form of nation building uh, in, uh, in modern nation states. Monarchs are very useful for institutions, institutional um, uh, development. And finally, uh, monarchs also maintain various economic and capitalist structures um, for external powers. Um, therefore, today's 
uh, problems uh, in the Middle East partly can be traced back to monarchical forms of government and who knows, perhaps the late military dictatorships can be also understood as particular monarchical forms.